violence. So as you can see, we have two youth leaders who are joining us here for the panel. We have Bryce, hi Bryce, <laughs> and Adriana. And of course, we have um, Ms. Anna Maria Loxin, our country director, and Miss Universe 2021, Harnas Sadu. So I will not hold off the media any longer. If you have any questions, please do raise your hand and my colleague, Abby, will uh, bring you the mic. Um, just a bit of a... Just a bit of a reminder, we will be prioritizing questions that pertain directly to the event today. Um, but maybe there will be some time later on to ask some related questions. But please do, let's, let's please start with um, the questions about menstrual equity, youth empowerment, and girls empowerment. Uh, one, two, three. Good morning! Hi, Harnas. Welcome Hola. to the Philippines. Hola. I'm MJ Marfori from TV5 News. Yay, well, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, because it's related to your advocacy, did you dis did you experience uh, discrimination about menstrual health when you were younger? Can you share it with us? Maybe you know when your hormones was you know, was haywire because of being a woman. There's no mic. Yeah. Well, um, I think I still had the honor and um, I was enough lucky that my mom being a gynecologist made sure that I'm comfortable when I'm talking about my menstrual health. But I think the only discrimination that I felt was within my own self. Whenever oh. I used to go to the school, I was very uncomfortable to talk about this. Mm -hmm. But there, where I realized that if I don't speak, speak about it now, then it would get worse. Not only for me, but so many women out there who don't have the access to pads and who are living in such a uh, stereotype uh, mindset of people around them where they think menstruation is a taboo and untouchable. Mm -hmm. So that's where I felt that this is not only for me, for everyone out there. So let's make it a normal. Let's talk about it and normalize it. And now that you're Miss Universe, of course, you're human too. You also, and a woman, you also have period, right? So w what happens when you have to wear all those glamorous clothes, you have to go to these events, and of course, you're not feeling well, or it's that time of the month. Um, <laughs> I think it happens with everyone. When we are on our periods, we have different moods, and it's okay uh, to feel the way you feel. And um, with me also, I think even during Miss Universe passion, it was so many of us, and it, one of us was on a, every day. We were on periods, one of us. So um, I think um, that is not a reason for us to make an excuse of that we can't do something or uh, I'm on my period and that's why I don't want to work. It's definitely your personal choice, but trust me, you are unstoppable and we bleed every month and that should not come in, in between our work to achieve our goals. Thank you, Arnaz. Enjoy Thank your you. time here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, MJ. I think we have, sir, yes. Hi, Arnaz. Hello. Welcome to the meeting. I'm Nolly Berrio. Uh, my question, it is normal for uh, a woman like you uh, to get emotional during their month. I'm sorry? Uh, it is normal for uh, a woman like you to get emotional during their month. Absolutely, yes. I'm a woman and I menstruate. So it's totally um, um, uh, okay to feel emotional, have different moods during uh, when you are menstruating. And I think people forget most of the times that we are also a human being. Uh, we all go through different emotions and it's, it's important to express it out. Um, there's a part of your body that is occurrence and it's happening every month and you need to feel comfortable with what you do and what you say. And if not only her, she herself being comfortable about her emotions, but at the same time people around her needs to make her more comfortable and that's very important. Okay, uh, should a young girl need to tell her family or close friends about her experiences with regard to her person? Uh, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, absolutely yes. Whoever she is comfortable with, her mom, her sister, her friend, or even her brother, 
if she's comfortable to talk about her first experience of periods, I think it's important to talk. The more we talk, is more we're going to educate ourselves. And the time we talk, we won't only talk for ourselves, but we will give the voice to a lot of women around the world. And I'm really grateful that I've gotten this opportunity to speak about what I really want to and to break stigmas about menstrual health and women empowerment. I think not everyone gets this opportunity and it is overwhelming at the same time, but when I hear young girls, young boys talking about uh, menstruation and having their viewpoints and sharing their stories, that makes my voice more strong because it's not only mine, it's all of them talking together. It's the whole universe united. So I'm really um, grateful and responsible towards the platform that is given to me through Miss Universe organization to break so many uh, stereotype mindsets towards menstrual health. Yeah. How bad is menstrual discrimination in your country? I think there are some parts in India and I think all around the world, maybe in Philippines too if I'm not wrong, where when women uh, during their those days, which is periods when they are menstruating, they are asked to stay out of their own home, and they are in most of the parts they're separated, and they're not allowed to go to temple, to touch a few things, to perform the normal activities as a normal human being in that own family, just because she's menstruating, and they believe that it will get impure, and it's a taboo, and it's untouchability. And I think we know it's wrong. <laughs> Nothing like that uh, is uh, supposed to be even thinking like. I think the stigma starts within our mindset. And that is the time when a girl grows up being uncomfortable about her own health and she never speaks. And that leads to of her not achieving her goals, which should never be the uh, situation now. And now things are changing. Now I saw everyone talking about it, normalizing it, their own experiences, and making young girls feel comfortable around themselves. I think this is the change we want. Absolutely. Um, it's an honor for me to be here today and to take forward of what we have been doing in Delhi, India. Uh, and we are launching, donating another machine, a pad machine with Pan International, Pad Man and Museum's organization. And this will not only give uh, pads to women in that community and young girls, they will educate themselves about the pad machine and how accessible it is for them to make their own pads. And I believe that if you don't ask for a pad, nobody will give you a pad. And now you need not to ask for a pad because you are a superwoman and you can make your own pad. And it will also give livelihood so, to so many women in that community. And I think that is what we really uh, would see happening. Women supporting each other and uh, uh, uplifting and uh, taking care of ourselves, our health, and being more vocal. So uh, I'm really, really excited about that part of the trip too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think we have Claire, and then we have Sir, and then Queen Namaste. Namaste. I'm self Kapanas for a star mother. In the future, you will have children of your own. At what age, in case you will have a daughter, with uh, you? Uh, at what age of your daughter or daughters you will educate them about menstruation? Because in the past, young girls do not have, uh, uh, were not educated and were, uh, sorry, were traumatized mm -hmm. in their first menstruation. Right, well, that's too far to think about yeah. and I, I don't know what will happen. Uh, whether it will be a girl child or a boy, a boy, a boy child. Uh, uh, yes, child. Uh, yes, either it could be a girl or a boy child. But for me, educating both of them is more important. It's not only about educating the girl about her menstruation, making her feel comfortable and giving her the best uh, answers to her questions regarding that, but also to a boy. Because, she, uh, because he will equally support um, his sister mother, his friend, his fiance, his wife. And they play equal parts in our lives. 
So um, I also feel that there are so many young youth, especially right now, who still don't talk about uh, menstruation. And they know that due to that, they miss their schools, they do not achieve a lot of things, and I don't want them to regret after 70 years of their lives when they have a girl child and they feel like that I should have talked about it. Not because of herself, but now that she has daughter and she knows that how difficult it's going to be for her and I think we all go through a lot of peer pressure and even I was going through during my pre-teens uh, where I realized that um, talking about your health talking about something which is going to be a part and which is natural and not in your hands is very important to educate yourself and everyone around you so uh, I learned when I knew that it was the time to learn. And uh, again, about the fact that when young girls are bullied, when they have stains on their pants or in schools or anywhere they go, I think that needs to stop. I was enough fortunate that episode didn't happen to me during the school, but it happened with me during work. And in any place, whether in schools, your workplace, everyone needs to understand that this is not what you need to run from. They try to hide pads when you go out and you purchase a pad. They try to not talk about menstruation and try to change the topic. But then, there where we have uh, organizations like Plan International to support us, to educate us, and to make it very important out there to break the stigmas about menstruation, which is not as, as it's not a stigma that we have to break. And um, Miss Annie, what do you think about this question? That I'm really excited about. Um, I think there's one, if I talk about food, I hope that's okay. Uh, I'm a foodie and I love to um, keep on digging in food. So I've heard about Halo. Halo, Halo. Oh, I, I love sweets and um, I think I really want to try Halo. And there are some incredible foods that uh, Philippines is also famous for and I would love to. Do you have any names that you think that I should try? Adobo. 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 Sinigang. Sinigang. Lechon. Lechon. Okay. You, you, you're going to visit vegan with Ilocos. Ilocos empanada. And Ilocos empanada. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, yes, so you write that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to try that. And also about Filipino mangoes. Um, India yeah. is also famous for mangoes. You can compare it's now. It's a seasoned with mangoes. You have the sweetest mango. <laughs> <laughs> India has like, I think, 25 different types of mangoes. I know you have more than us, but stay tuned for that who wins this competition. <laughs> vlog it, please. Thank you so much. Do a vlog. Thank you. Yes, so okay. Misha, let's do a vlog. <laughs> Thank you. Can you have a follow up question from Switzerland so now? Um, I have experienced a huge transformation itself where I have gotten this incredible opportunity to meet um, amazing individuals and organizations like Plan International and Plan India, where uh, we got to do something that I've been waiting for years and years, and also to um, empower women of all colors, sizes, and shapes, to make them feel confident about achieving their goals and to make them realize that you all are unstoppable and you have that X factor to conquer your goals. And I'm always here to support you. And I'm really looking forward to the upcoming months of my day. Time is flying like anything, but um, I think it, it is going to be an unforgettable uh, year of my life, which will teach me lessons of the rest of my life. So um, thanks to all of you for being a part of um, my day, and I can't wait for the In the heat of the pressure when you were in Israel competing, you said you only had one month to prepare, which is right, 30 days. days. Huh? Yes, only 30 days, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible because you had such a powerful performance. Um, what would you, and yesterday you said that the girls who are competing in this year's MUPH are super strong. So at this point of pressure and last minute, Reps. 
What's your winning secret? How did you do it? Okay. <laughs> well, my my winning secret was that I have no time to think about anything else because I've been so focused. But I think my winning secret has always been um, to take care of my mental health, to make sure that everything that comes in my way is temporary and I'm going to grow from it. If I don't win the crown, it's not the end of my life. What I have learned, what I have experienced is what is what makes me a winner, is more important to me. So whenever I felt that pressure was too high yeah. and it was getting overwhelming and out of control, I always took that time for my own self and just backed off from everything that was happening. It's it's normal to feel overwhelming, it's normal to feel nervous. You need to meditate, you need to relax yourself and understand that nothing is in your control. Just enjoy because you will regret that. After when everything is over, you will regret that you should have enjoyed. So be grateful that you have given this opportunity to represent yourself and uh, your spark and to, to inspire so many young ladies around you who wants to be in your position right now. Super amazing. <laughs> I think it was uh, the first one month was kind of uh, understanding the lifestyle in New York. And we also got to do some experimental shoot in New York. And Esther has been one of my best companions to teach me everything about New York. <laughs> And now I can proudly say that that I'm a new New Yorker and I can't wait to wait to explore more part of the New York. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Yan. Do we have any other questions? Okay, um Harnas, um how excited are you to meet and to be with uh, the other Miss Universe Queen? I think I'm more than excited to express. Um, it's my first time in Philippines and we know how um, wonderful uh, the girls are uh, of Miss Philippines in US 2022. So really um, looking into to meet them and to understand their ideology and how strong they are to uh, and responsible towards uh, talking about themselves and to make a voice for so many young women around them. Uh, how beautifully she speaks and how beautifully she means what she speaks is important. And the hashtag itself, confidently beautiful, is what I'm really looking forward to. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're going to vegan later. Uh, have you heard about vegan? Has Esther told you about vegan? Well, I really hope that uh, we get enough time to go to vegan. And I think Esther did. I think Esther. You talked about Esther. Um, oh, she says yes, we are going. And yes, yeah, she has been talking about that a lot. And I, I'm really um, excited to be there and watch it through my own eyes and uh, share with you all that what was my experience like. Okay. 